future personal emotional mobility is the title of this latest workshop. Can you explain the meaning of emotional in that context? When is design emotional? I think design is emotional when it has uh, a meaning that moves you. It can have a meaning that design is meaning, but a meaning can also be just one of reference. Ah, that means that. Thank you. Tick in the box. Don't have to think about it. But when you become moved by it, you think differently, you react, your true emotions come out because a design helped trigger that or moved you into that, then that's an emotional type of design. And I think we have a responsibility as designers to see how much of that we can do, how efficiently we can do that, and in such a manner that people appreciate it and are not exhausted by it, are not turned off by it, are not alienated by it. Yeah, it's an interesting challenge. Could you tell me about the importance of design team? How do you take your decision? A design team is very, very important um, because one and one of creative minds easily equals five. And uh, two plus two easily equals 20 if they're handled correctly. One on its own is really tough to get more than one. So design teams, design teamwork, I think is, is fundamental to getting the most out of a creative source, this back and forth working off. But that takes a bit of management skills, people skills. And I've had the great opportunity to work with great people and under great managers as well. You know, For a long time, I worked for some fantastic bosses. And they really helped me understand the value of, uh, of getting the most out of a team. This year, you are involved in some different workshops with universities like Harvard and right now SPD. Professor Bengal, what students <laughs> should do to become designers? Okay, I'm not a professor, all right? Um, but I would ask students to, on the one hand, be more questioning, not accept everything that they even think they know. And on the other hand, be courageous, be bold, be ready to think differently and show differently. I'm, I'm often amazed at how, how timid and conservative I find young people are, when in reality I always expect the young people to be the boldest and the strongest. So I think they have an enormous amount of thought and creativity to offer to us. We just have to make sure they have a chance. How do you imagine the future of the car, above all related with the electric car? Well, the future of the car should be quite interesting to follow. Completely different than the future of the automobile. Automobiles are things you use to go from A to B. Cars are what you care about. They're what you are. Will we need those in the future? Will people be able to relate to them? Uh, this is not such an, open, uh, question, uh, such an uh, open and closed issue. It's not so obvious that the people of the future, the young people today, as they come into the line to, to buy and, and use their own personal mobility, are going to be so passionate about cars like the generations before them. They'll use mobility. They'll use automobiles. But will they care about cars? I think that's up to us as car designers to make sure that... Uh, at least they have an emotional sense of personal mobility. What kind of architecture do you prefer? I mean, I admire architects and their work. I have great respect for them. I like to see where architecture goes because I generally feel where architecture goes, car design follows and everybody else too. So it's important to get an idea where these guys are going, what they're thinking and what their objectives are. So I can only say I'm a student of it and I've learned a lot, I have a lot more to learn. But I really enjoy working with people like, uh, like Frank Barco from Barco Leibinger. The guys like that have shown me really how creative architects could be in any situation.